Well folks, beautiful coast day and uh, I'm down at the slipway at Greymouth with a Bengal, what's that second word, bark, bank, is in for repairs and maintenance. Bengal, Bengal Bank is the uh, is the name. Now the slipway is being upgraded present time, and it's going to be able to take uh, two hundred ton vessels. You look at this one, and. Uh, it's a reasonable size. Oh, fuck, she's a she's a big uh, she's a big bit of steel. We got uh, looks like the painters are in here. No, it's not. It's Mark. <laughs> Mark. G'day, hello. Well, welcome back. Now, Thank you very much indeed. Now how listen, how long, have you been, how, how long have you been fishing on the coast? On this particular coast, I fished in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. Then I made a bit of a detour in life, and I've come back, and I've been fishing about the last seven years, just during the albacore season on this coast. Fantastic. How big's the boat? This one is 53 feet. 53 feet, and how many tonne would that be? Uh, it's, um, according to the, when we, we took it out of the water in... Um, uh, Wangaroa, it's 80 ton. 80 ton, okay. Yep, yep. Well, what do you think of uh, the development where they're, putting, they're upgrading the slip so it'll take 100 ton boats, is it? I think they're going to take 200. 200 ton boats. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, this is a great facility, you know. And we get the shed and we get a few more, you know, a few extra bits and pieces, you know. Uh, th yeah, it's fantastic. No, no, it's going to be good for the port, I hope. And with, you know, refurbishing our berths and that, it's great. I mean, I'm, my boat's based here permanently and. Uh, yeah, well, it's a very, very cost-effective place for me to keep it. Keep it. So anyone else that wants to, it's worth cost-effective place, come to Greymouth. It's it's worth a lot of money to the coast economy. The fishing industry is actually vital. You know, have a look at the you know have a look at the factories. What they've invested here in infrastructure, it's, it's fantastic. And I mean, you know, it's a pretty vibrant little port. You know, certainly tonnage-wise and um, and employment-wise. That's no, definitely definitely. How many years ago did you start as a fisherman? Oh, I left school. It was, my, it was my very first job. I fished commercially mainly out of bluff for the first 10 years of my, of my working life. Well, down in a man's country down there. Yeah, it is. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Once again, hey, they're like coasters. Eh? They're some of the greatest blokes you'll ever meet. You know, they the, really are. The uh, encouraging young fellas to start off as a deckhand, it's a lot harder these days? I think it is. You know, I mean, when I left school, it's what I wanted to do. It wasn't sort of what I was forced to do or it wasn't encouraged to do. I left because I wanted to do it, and you know, I was very, very young when I had my skipper's ticket. Yep. And uh, you know, my sort of, I was quite young when I ran my, my first boats. What was the first? What was the first boat called? Can you remember? Yeah, it was called the Buddha, the B U D A, the Buddha. Yeah, and then um, I ran that quite unsuccessfully, I might add. Right. And then um, ran a trawler for right and you called the old one out of bluff for I think about eighteen months to two years, and yeah, that was a, uh, that was good fun. Now, have you ever sunk one? No. Haven't no, you? I haven't. No, I can't, look, find, a, I what, can't no. find a bloody fisherman who sunk a boat. I don't know what's going on. Well, you were the other day. <laughs> we, we had to have a bit of a laugh when you were aboard the Cook Can. You didn't, you didn't ask Ross Coppel, the captain of it, no. if he'd sunk any. No, well, he'd still be telling you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> so you've got to, yeah, you've got to, you've got to go back aboard the Cook Canyon and speak to Ross. <laughs> I wish I, I wish I'd interviewed you first. <laughs> you know, look, it will take Ross quite a while, yeah, because there is a list. <laughs> so when you, when you, uh, when you head out to sea, do, do you yep. know what you're looking for before you go? I only target albacore just because it's a non-quota species, or TAC, we have a total allowable catch. Yeah. So that's all that this boat, under under my ownership, we're just albacore tuna. So the boat only really works sort of, you know, bit of November, December, through to April. Oh, so you're sort, of, up here. you're sort of semi-retired. I love oh, it. Se <laughs> semi-tired? <laughs> so do you, you uh, do the fish get uh, processed locally here? 
what we do now, we just ice our fish on board and yep. then they get, um, my understanding is they are, well, Tally's in Westfleet here, just put them in refrigerator containers and I believe they go to Indonesia and then you buy them back in your tin. The can that's got, you know, that everyone yeah, buys yeah. their tuna for lunches, well, that's what we catch. And well, they're right too. We, sus- we sustainably catch it because it's all line caught. Um, it's all done by hand. Um, so, yeah. And how many guys do you employ? I just employ, at the, at the start of last season, I employ two. And then as, as the as this season just tapers down, one. But this, this year, I'll just do it with one. I've got a very, very keen young fella yep. who's as rear as hen's teeth to find someone. He's 22 years of age. He's motivated. He's keen. And he said to me on after the third or fourth trip that he wants to sit in my chair one day, and I thought, good on you. Yeah, so that's, you're, you're worth encouraging. You're they're worth, the ones. You know, well, hard to find, please. Like, really hard to find. Now, you probably don't know, but there are the the, uh, the West Coast mayors have been given funding to help uh, people upskill. Yep. So there's probably funding available for your young fella to upskill into uh, Skipper's Ticket, or is he heading that way anyway? Oh, look, he will. I mean, he obviously, well, once he does another couple of seasons, he'll have, he'll have sufficient time you yep. know, to, to, to progress further, and he's keen to. And, I mean, here's one of the greatest things. I know that we go on about this as an industry, but, I mean, you know, there's a young fella, 22, keen, and he's drug-free, you know, and that's really... I was going to say, it's a bit rare, isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, so, so, the, the uh, you know, when you look at the legislation that's come down... And, and continues to come down from uh, from government, all aimed at, you know, I guess in their eyes improving things. The likes of the, the quota system, do you think that's worked? You know, most people say it has. It's Yeah, I believe it has, but it's like anything. It needs tweaking. It needs someone with, pardon the expression, a set of balls to go, you know, that this fish stock has gone ballistic. Like here, I believe there's a small example here, and I may be speaking completely out of turn here, but several years ago they cut the rig quota here. Yeah. Well, now there's rig out here that are that big, they're like great white pointers. And, I mean, you know, this is just... They're, because they don't have a pred- there are no predators on them, you know? So how come we can't catch more of those for a short period of time? There used to be a paddle crab fishery here, but because these rigs have gotten so prevalent... What do they eat? Paddle crabs. There's no paddle crabs here. But if you told someone like Forrest and Bird, they'd say that we've decimated the uh, paddle crab fishery by overfishing it, whereas the complete opposite's happened. It's, it's, it's really interesting because so it needs th- those um, those quotas need to be adjusted up and down, don't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. It, it, it's that was what it was always meant to be. It was always meant to be adjusted up and down. Yeah. And we, of course, we would like to see it adjusted up. Um, and I mean, you know, some of these species down here are incredibly healthy. I mean, not some of them, just about all of them. Incredibly healthy. And there's, there's nothing under pressure here. The only thing under pressure is, the, is us. Yeah, from commercial fishing. That's yeah. the only thing that's under pressure. Which is, which is, we've just got to quietly work on it and yeah. uh, work with government. Now, the grey bar. Yep. Everyone talks about the grey bar. I go on to uh, YouTube and I've taken a few videos myself. And it's, um, it's the odd day there where I think, you got to be mad. Is it? Is it? Re- is it that bad when you're on board? Oh look, you really would have to probably <laughs> ask someone that's a lot gamer than I am because um, I beat the weather across the bar. Oh, you do? But yeah. No, look, oh, please. I have the utmost respect for it. And um, yeah, no, I've had the odd entertaining trip across, but nothing like you'll see on YouTube. Nothing <laughs> at all. I'm well and truly tied up before that happens. Oh, well, <laughs> per- perhaps it's um, having a few years under the belt, eh? I think it's the fact that um, I can't really afford to lose my boat. I can't afford to hurt anybody. Yeah. And, uh, and I can't afford to hurt myself. And I don't really like swimming. So oh, well, <laughs> well, well, look, Coasters, um, uh, I'm in Greymouth today. I'm talking to another fisherman. They're creating such wealth for New Zealand. They're actually, you know, we've got this massive debt out there. And, and the farmers and the gold miners and the fishermen, these are the guys that are paying the bills. You know, here's me. I'm, I'm getting paid each uh, each week from the government as I'm retired. Good and, on you. And Good you're you. and you're doing it. Oh, I, look, <laughs> but I mean, there are so many of us that do it because we love it, and it's a passion to us. Yeah, we're, we're, there is no better job in the world than this. There is none. We are, you know, we don't rock up to an office every day. Every day is different. And, you know, you ask of people that, that have been full-time. You know, I'm only a part-time, really. 
and you speak to these guys that have done it. There was a very, very good article today. I think it was actually on, sorry, on stuff.co. Neil McDonald. Right. from Dunedin. Yeah. Excellent. Look at him. Had his fish for 40 something years. Very, very constructive. And, you know, good on him. Good on him. You know, he was saying what's really wrong with things. And you said it well. Well, we've just got to, we've got to constantly improve, don't we? You know, absolutely. Identify the problems and then work on them. Yeah. And, uh, but, but so many of the problems aren't man, aren't ours. Yeah. So many of the problems are what you'd call like misinformation, and you know everything just seems to get blown out of complete proportion. It's yeah. just pathetic. Now, how many hectare dolphins have you have you netted? Absolutely <laughs> none. I can't. Absolutely. Try that, and find a commercial fisherman that's netted, this. <laughs> and the young ones that have have done everything right. They've logged them in. They've told people which. I think we've killed three in about the last, what haven't we, 21 years or something? Nothing three. nothing in the last 10 years. Is it? Yeah. No. Yeah. Incredible. And yet you go onto the forest and bird site yep. and you'd think that we're having bloody Hector Dolphin burgers for tea. Well, uh, sorry, just on Neil <laughs> McDonald's um, a post that he put, or whatever it was on stuff, sorry, his young children were sent home from school after someone, I think Sea Shepherd or some environmental terrorist group had gone along and he was sent home with a photo of a dolphin with chips on a plate. Oh, you know, yeah. where, 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 where's this mentality coming from, yeah, please? That's, where, that's, it's not. It's not coming from normal people. No. And when and when they start hammering into the kids like that, that's just, you know, yeah. God, that's just crazy stuff. I'm afraid I believe, you know, absolutely. And I mean, you know, we're not doing anything wrong. We're doing, you know, we can't, I mean, I can't afford to lose this boat. Um, Sust- so, sustainably harvesting exactly. and keeping our people fed. Yeah. Now, what's the job on today? Look, it's just uh, a little bit of anti-fouling on the bottom. Yep. Just, uh, we're pretty lucky here because we're in fresh water in the river here. Um, yes. we, don't, we don't get a lot of growth, so it's just a wee bit of a tidy up. Fortunately, I did my, my uh, major survey last year, so this is just uh, this is this is a free one for me. So. Um, and now, so back now, in the water in four or five days, and then we'll, we'll go fishing in another probably two weeks. Now, I'm, uh, I'm going to have a session with uh, Tani uh, Gibson, the mayor here. I, I, most <laughs> weeks I do that. Anything else you need? We'll get the slipway upgraded. Slipway We're getting a upgraded. brand new building. Yeah, We're awesome. getting a dredge to dig the place out. Yeah, fantastic. And fantastic. Uh, it's, it's just brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. What else can we go? Well, you know, what we, what we're thinking about it. No, yeah. look, that'll do it. <laughs> it's, it's taken how many years to get this far? Oh, no, it's, it's but going. it is, please. This is a fantastic facility, and this is a fantastic place to get things done. Oh, I love you it. Know, good engineers, you know. Yeah, it's great. It's a good place to be. Well, there we go, Coasters. On that note, we'll just uh, we'll call this one quits. Hey, thanks so much for talking to me. It's just just fantastic. You're more than welcome. Please keep this up. You know this. You know we. Yeah, please keep it up. Catch you later. All right. Thank you, Roger. Need.